today. We have uh, our kickoff for Sunday school on the 8th of this month at 9 o'clock. And, uh, and we'll have coffee and, and whatever for the adults while that's going on. But that evening, from 4 to 7 p.m., the 6th through the 12th graders are invited to come up to Christ Lutheran Church where they're going to join other members of our cluster youth for a gathering and we'll also zoom into uh, a meeting that's in, being held in Lincoln later on in that evening. And we'll have pizza. So if nothing more, come for the pizza. All right. So today we have one birthday, which is unusual. It's Deb, Deb Eisman and, uh, and an anniversary, Mike and uh, Jennifer Eisman. So can we sing to Deb?
we pray, Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is Correct our choices and hear us in your truth. That renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
we rise to the gospel. The gospel according to St. John, the sixth year, beginning at the 56th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? Is this the Spirit that gives life? The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord. to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Have the children come forth. Too long. It burns up, doesn't it? All right. 
so you have to bake it just right. Yeah. Well, you have the bread of life given to you, in it, and there's only one instruction. What was the instruction? What do you think that instruction is? You don't have to have all the ingredients. Yeah. Don't eat it. <laughs> yes. Well, it, you, Jesus says, abide in me. Abide in me. So all you have to do is believe in Jesus. You don't need all the mixings. You don't need all of the <laughs> ingredients. You just have to abide in Jesus. But if you want if you want good groundies, make follow the recipe. Okay. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on this group of young people. We know that they're now in the midst of their first few weeks of school. We pray that you be with them. As you abide with us, we ask that they abide with you. This we ask in your name. Amen. All right. So remember my promise too. If you if you fill out these your annual your uh, bulletins each week, we'll have some prizes for you. Okay. Turn them in the next week with your name on it, and we'll have some things for you. Okay. So thanks for coming up. often sing these very words before hearing this gospel read. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. When we do, we are singing Simon Peter's famous response to Jesus at the end of today's gospel reading. We've spent the last five Sundays hearing from the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, and now we've come to the dramatic end. Here we are, because for us there is simply nowhere else to go. Just like Simon Peter, we've come to believe and know that Jesus is the Holy One of God, and we trust that He has the words of eternal life. We join Simon Peter and countless generations of Christians who have faced trials and tribulations beyond even our own. In coming to church, in coming to worship, to pray, to be reminded of our source of hope, and to receive once again the meal that offers us Jesus. And before we go to get to that meal, let us revisit John chapter 6 one last time and see what the conclusion of this chapter means for us in the midst of our chaotic and stressful world. Today's passage opens up with Jesus telling his followers to abide in him. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. What does that mean? What does it mean to abide in Jesus? Well, the word can mean to remain, to endure, to stand by someone, or to stand fast. Jesus, in other words, wants us to stand fast, to remain in him, to stick to him, no matter what happens, good or bad. Jesus does not just tell us to abide in him, he tells us that those who eat his flesh and drink his blood abide in him. Oh, this might refer to the Holy Communion, even though he says it long before the institution of the Holy of uh, the Lord's Supper. But I think it certainly does refer to Holy Communion. It also means, I think, that Jesus does not want us to simply abide in the idea. It is not the idea of Jesus that saves us. 
It is the flesh and the blood. It is the person in Jesus. He is the hope of the world in flesh and blood. There is no other hope. That is what we believe. Not, nor does that need to be. But we do need constant reminders of this because it is of human nature, at least since the fall, that we turn to false hopes that can control us. This is a constant theme throughout the scripture. God's people trusting God for a little while, then deciding they need something more, something more concrete. They put their trust in something, anything, anything that they can see and grab hold of, fruit that promises that what, that what we eat, but that will be like God. A king who promises safety and prosperity. A rival God who is more popular with those around themselves. Warriors, and so on, and so on. Abide in me, Jesus says, then and now. Remain in me. Do not turn to all of those false hopes. The true hope is right here in flesh and blood. There is no other hope, nor does there need to be. This teaching is difficult. It is true, but it can also be difficult to believe, to accept, to abide in Jesus. It can be hard to remain in hope in this hope and this truth. Which brings us to the part of the gospel reading where many people turn back and no longer follow Jesus. This teaching is difficult, they say. Who can accept it? By placing our hope in this man standing before us? This man whose father and mother we know? We do not see him overthrowing Rome. We do not see him sitting on the king's throne. We do not see him changing our daily struggles. No, he may be able to offer us a free lunch, but he's not worth giving up our life for. It can be difficult to accept all of this, to believe all of this. And in the world today, there's a whole new reason that this is difficult. Back a few generations ago, it was simply not difficult to believe in Jesus. Most everyone I knew believed in Jesus. The ones who did not were Jewish. The Christians were not all Lutherans, but they all went to church. It was not hard to believe in Jesus. But that's not the case anymore. Many people around us are not Christians. They do not share our beliefs. And this makes it harder to believe that Jesus is the hope of the world, in part because it can make us seem arrogant or judgmental. Who are we to say that Jesus alone can save the world? Does that mean we think our religion is right and everyone else's is wrong? That does not seem very nice. But how do we escape it? A good example is found in a book by a Catholic priest who wrote of his experience while walking the Camino de Santiago in Spain. He recounts a conversation along the route with some unchurched people who were very curious about his faith and what he was doing. After he shares a little about his faith in Jesus, they asked him, so, do you believe Jesus is a greater master than Buddha or Muhammad or other spiritual teachers? He answered, I do. I am a Christian, which means I believe that though there are other revealers and prophets, he is the most full revealer of God. So they asked, so do you believe Christianity is better than other religions? answered yes but better in the sense of a fuller picture of God and not in a moral sense then they asked do you really believe that Jesus is divine and he answered yes 
they ask, so do you believe only Christians can be saved? And he answered, no, I believe that lots of people of many traditions can know much of God and are good and holy people, probably holier than I am, and will certainly be welcomed by God into eternal embrace. But yes, I believe that those who know Jesus have the best picture of who God is. Then they asked, but surely you understand that the belief that Jesus is divine is only just a myth, a sort of fable, don't you? And he answered, no, I see Jesus as real, as real as you or me, more real than you or me. Without him, I cannot be me, my real me, my truest me. He recounts this as an uncomfortable conversation, but not an unusual one. These kinds of conversations are taking place among Christians and their friends all the time. That is the world in which we live. So it is a challenge for this and many other reasons to believe that Jesus is our only hope, that it is to be found nowhere else but in the flesh and blood of the Son of God. So many turn back. It might be good to remember that those who were physically following Jesus had trouble believing in him and putting their hope in him. In this gospel reading, for example, after Jesus told them, the people who were following them, that whoever eats him will live because of him, many turned back and no longer went about with him. We might be surprised that they found it difficult. They were there with Jesus in flesh and blood. God was among them in the person of Jesus. The Savior of the world was right there with them, feeding them, healing them, teaching them. What an amazing opportunity they had. And they simply gave it up. We can re wonder what we might have done. Truth be told, don't we often do the same? We may not have Jesus in flesh and blood, but we have his words. We have the Bible. We have his invitation to pray. Every time we go without reading his word or conversing with him in prayer, aren't we doing the same thing? It has never been easy to follow Jesus. It takes faith and trust and the willingness to remain with him, even though the going gets tough. Do you also wish to go away? Jesus responded to the people, leaving him by turning to his disciples and saying, asking them, do you also wish to go away? Jesus is not going to insist that we follow him, that they remain with him. They are given a choice. And in fact, we are given a choice over and over again. We have the choice to remain with Jesus or not. Everyone has that choice. But is it really a choice for us? Don't we feel the same way that Simon and Peter felt? Lord, to whom shall we go? We know that there is nowhere else to turn to find hope in this life. We know that Jesus alone has the words of eternal life. He's the Holy One of God. No other. Just as Simon Peter said and just as countless generations of Christians have said and believed down through the centuries. Each and every Sunday we gather together to remember the one who has, alone has the words of eternal life. In a world that surrounds us with words that often bring anxiety, division, and even despair. Words that threaten, intimidate, and cannot always be trusted. We are here to receive the priceless blessing of hearing the words of eternal life. Those who abide in him have hope in life essential and eternal, always. Next week, we will come forward to receive Jesus.
in the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. We will place our hands out because we have come to believe and know that Jesus is the Holy One of God. We receive this bread from heaven and eat it to abide with Jesus. We eat this bread and drink this wine simply because we believe Jesus when he says that those who do this abide in him and he in us. We do this with the prayer that Jesus will abide in us as we abide in him, that he will remain with us, stand fast with us, and help us to never forget that he alone has the words of eternal life. Jesus, and Jesus alone, is the word of eternal life. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of the day is, Come with us, O blessed Jesus. The peace of the Lord be with you. You may share the peace with each other. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. Lead the church to put your trust in Jesus, the living word. Direct preachers, teachers, writers, and all the baptized in faithful speech and bold witness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creator God, we in all creation are sustained by your word. We pray for all who remind us of our interconnectedness with all living things. Prosper with the work of conservation organizations. 
ELC advocacy, and farmers and ranchers who care for your creation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of wisdom, as our nation navigates another election cycle, guide our leaders to act justly for the sake of the world. Bring about fruitful conversation among your people and bring about change where you see fit. Sustain all who serve as juries in their deliberations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered. Be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Our Tri-State shut-in members, Donna, Gladys, Janice, Audrey, Ruby, Laverne, Inez, and Kathy. We hold them in prayer because they are not forgotten. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of restoration, bring healing and fullness to all who cry to you where pain is sharp. Having a sense of comfort and relief, where pain turns deep, bring your tender mercy. Care for those on our hearts, especially Jay, Sheena, Doyle, Gracia, Ernestine, Shelley, Gail, Justin, Donna, Ashton, Jason, and Kurt, and Brandon. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of new life, protect students and teachers for a new school year. Bring an end to school shootings and aisles of violence. Move us to do all that is necessary to ensure a safe future for our children. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of every generation, remember with, th with thanksgiving all who have completed their baptismal journeys. Strengthen us in our baptismal callings to serve you faithfully until our journey's end. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. May our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious upon us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Our ascending hymn is Abide With Us, Our Savior, in the LBW number 263. 